Many countries around the world are now sending their top diplomats to the Indian capital, Delhi, over the Ukraine war. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov paid a visit to India on March 31. According to The Guardian, Lavrov not only met Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Ashankar during his visit to Delhi, but also Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Lavrov was given the honor when British Foreign Secretary Liz Strauss and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi did not receive it. In a meeting with Jaya Shankar, Lavrov said that the issue of Ukraine is not only about Ukraine but also the world system. He says the United States has taken away all European independence and forced Washington to follow its policy. And now the West wants to talk about all the issues related to the Ukraine problem. In his words, while the West is calling Ukraine's war with Russia a battle between democracy and dictatorship, they are hiding the fact that the West has established dictatorship with the United States at its center. He also said that Ukraine now realizes that joining NATO is not an option. Lavrov told reporters that many years ago Russia began talking about using its own national currency instead of the dollar and the euro in transactions with India, China and other countries for international trade. He said it would be more important in the current situation. The Guardian recalls that Lavrov visited Beijing before visiting Delhi. He spoke in support of the U.S. alliance but said that maintaining some independence was important. Reuters says India has bought at least 13 million barrels of oil from Russia since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, whereas in the whole of 2021, India bought 16 million barrels of oil from Russia, while Western countries are refraining from buying Russian oil in the international market. India is buying huge quantities of oil at discounted rates. Russia is supplying oil to India at pre-war prices, Bloomberg reports. According to various reports, India and Russia are trying to introduce a system based on the Indian rupee to carry on trade between the two countries, avoiding Western blockades. Russia and India's central bank officials have met to discuss trade issues between the two countries, the Hindu reports. They are talking about some banks which will not face any problem in the Western blockade. During Lavrov's visit to Delhi just hours before his visit, U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor Duleep Singh warned India that if any country wanted to avoid an economic blockade on Russia due to the Ukraine war, it would have to bear the consequences. The United States does not want any country to strengthen the ruble by bypassing the dollar-based system. Washington does not expect this, especially from friends and allies of the United States. Dalip Singh said that Russia will always be a weak member of the alliance with China. The more China leads in partnership with Russia, the more problems it will cause for India. If India has a conflict with China, then no one can expect Russia to come forward to protect India. Singh, however, declined to comment on the rupee and ruble exchange when he recently bought India's S-400 air defense system from Russia. Under U.S. law, the United States can impose sanctions on anyone who buys something from an enemy country. As such, the United States has imposed sanctions on Turkey to buy the S-400, but has refrained from imposing sanctions on India. Because India is an important strategic ally of the United States in controlling China. According to a Newsweek report, on March 20 According to a Newsweek report, on March 22, U.S. President Joe Biden said that India's position in the U.S. Quad alliance had been shaken by the Ukraine issue, calling it a fight for democracy. He spoke in tune with India. Contrary to what Dalip Singh said, he told reporters that he would not tell India what to do. After the Crimea crisis in 2014, 
Europe did not pay enough attention to the blockade on Russia. Now everyone can see the results. On the other hand, Jayashankar said that the outcome of the war in Ukraine is yet to be seen. So far it has had an impact on fuel and food grain prices. If financial transactions and logistics get into trouble in the days ahead, it will be a catastrophe for the rest of the world. According to a BBC analysis, diplomats from many countries are visiting India and trying to win over India. But so far India wants to remain neutral. Russia has close ties with India and buys most of India's weapons from Russia. India's position could unexpectedly bring the country to the fore as a mediator in resolving the issue. Lavrov has already said that Moscow has no objection to Delhi's mediation. On the other hand, it has been said from Delhi that India is also ready to contribute to the establishment of peace. During the Cold War, India maintained relations with the Soviet Union as a member of the non-aligned movement, although the West, especially Britain, had a deep relationship with the secular Congress government of India. Many of India's aircraft and naval equipment were made in Britain. In other words, India retained its position in a third bloc outside the United States and the Soviet bloc, on which Britain's covert influence was considerable. At that time, the foundation of Russian-made weapons was laid in India, a reality from which India has not been able to emerge. But since the Cold War, especially since Prime Minister Narendra Modi's far-right BJP government took power, India's alliance with the United States has grown. The United States recently flew Apache and Chinook helicopters. C-16 and C-130J transport aircraft, P-7I maritime patrol aircraft, MH-70R submarine destroyers, and M-7 artillery to India. Has provided many more sophisticated military equipment, including howitzer, which are mainly used in the foothills of the Himalayas and in the Indian Ocean to control Chinese influence. While India, as a member of the US-led Quad Military Alliance, is helping the United States control China's influence in the region, India is not shying away from thinking of being a member of the Third Bloc during the Cold War. Although India does not like China, China's ally does not want to push Russia away. Clearly, no matter how close Narendra Modi's Hindutva government is to the United States, it is difficult for Delhi's leadership to emerge from India's secular realities. With Modi's democratically elected government trampling on democratic ideals, it is pointless to expect India to play a role in defending democracy in Ukraine. On the other hand, British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has justified India's decision by highlighting the indecision of Europe. He went on to say that it was reasonable for India to remain in that third bloc as before. At a time when the entire Western world, led by the United States, is collapsing. It is questionable how firmly grounded this effort of global Britain is.